Amen. So last week we started looking at, um, we started last week looking at praying. And um, it's one of the spiritual discipline that we have in the church. And prayer, as we said last week, is defined as just, it's just basically, you know, talking to God. It's not meditation. It's not passive reflection. It's, it's, it's man communicating with God from the recess of his soul. God made us that way, that we will communicate with him. And so it's a primary way for a believer in Jesus Christ to communicate his emotions and desires with God and to fellowship with God. But we talk about prayer because many people have many questions um, concerning prayers. Many are confused and people live a lie because prayer does not give what it's supposed to give. And sometimes people just walk about in confusion and with a sense of hypocrisy, not truly believing in God because when they do pray, they don't see what they pray for. And so they live of doubt. But you know, the, um, the herd mentality where you're part of the herd and, and because everyone the herd is saying and doing one thing, you do and say it, but deep inside, you're sensing something differently. So, so I wanted to address um, as much as possible, address the issue of praying. Um, then why we talk about prayer again is because people, you know, generally don't pray, you know, and so and so it's important because praying is a is a very necessary part of the Christian walk. I mean, while there's nowhere we clearly commanded us to really pray, I think it's 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 taken for it's it's, it's a requirement. Um, it goes without saying, I mean, again, I said last week that no one tells us to eat. We eat because we need to eat. We eat because if we don't eat, we'll not be alive. I think it's the same thing for prayer. Um, if we don't pray, um, we will, we're, not com we're, we're not communicating with God, and we, we wouldn't really hear from God as such and know exactly how to, how to really uh, proceed in this life. Um, and so many times we also pray, and I just want to highlight a few points, why reason why we should not uh, reason we should not use to pray. And we should not pray because, we, again, we feel we are commanded to. And, and some, I used to pray because I feel guilty. You know, I feel it's a commandment. If, like, if I don't pray, I'm sinning. And, but rather, it, it's an opportunity that I get. I, I should look at it rather as an opportunity that I get to talk with um, the God of the universe, Yahweh, the one true, righteous, holy God. It's an opportunity. And I should view it as such. But before it seemed like a commandment, and because the commandment, if it's like a burden, you know, you, you we time it's time to pray, there's prayer meeting, you don't want to go because it's like a burden. We should not also, we should not pray also to impress God, because God is not impressed with nothing we do. He knows, He knows everything um, that's happening around us. And He He, he knows the end, end from the beginning. And so whatever he does, he we do we do, he's not and when you go to him in prayer, he's not impressed. Uh, the only the only being that he's impressed in is Jesus Christ, um, his son with whom he's well pleased. Again, uh, we do not pray to change what God has ordained, what God ordained will be. Um, but when we pray, we should pray because praying, in a sense, grows our faith. So faith is really knowing who God is, and, and as we know who God is, we put our trust in God and walk in obedience to our knowledge of him. So we pray, it, we get to know his character, we get to know his nature. And as we know his nature, then we can get to trust him. If, if I don't talk to, to people around me, I don't get to know, I can't know them really. And I, I, I don't know what their character, I don't know their nature. I can observe and to us from afar, but to a certain extent, I can, I can pick up on who they really are. But when, when I personally start to communicate with these individuals or with this part of the person, you 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 hear their deepest secrets, deepest fear, deepest desires, and, and you get to know them a little bit more, more, more intimately, and and so know how to respond to them accordingly. And I think we should I think one another reason that we pray should that as we pray, we involve him in the affairs of our lives in a way that he is glorified. And that is what Christ did. Christ, when Christ prayed to the Father when he was here on earth, he, he, he didn't pray primarily. Um, to to tell God what he needs. He prayed God, prayed to God to involve God in what he was doing. 
so that God may be glorified. So as he prayed, people saw God work through him. For example, I think I mentioned this last week, we are at the grave of Lazarus when Christ was praying. He, he, he said, he said, the father always hears, he knows the father always hears him when he prays. But he was praying so that people may know that God is the one who's going to do this work. So, 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 and when whatever Christ did was just for, for the glory of, of, of God. And so again, instead of we glorify God by the work that we do, God is, is, is really, is, 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 is a spirit. And um, as such, no man has ever seen God. It's a spirit with all these, these characteristics, his, his very nature. And so when we, we pray, we should pray for him to be seen in us. And that's what it means when we should glorify God is that God is seen through us. So, so as I pray, whatever I pray about should be so that God might be glorified the same way Christ lived and as he lived here on earth, whatever he did, he did to glorify the Father. Whenever he prayed, his prayer was for him to do and become everything that needs to be and become so that God may be glorified. We also pray so that our hearts are reassured, you know, as we're going through rough times, as we face what we're facing, as we pray, our hearts are reassured, we are comforted that he is near. The same way when I come in and, I, and I'm down or, you know, I've got a friend or my parents or, or my daughter, my son, my wife, or we just, I'm talking and sometimes I don't really need an answer, but just the fact that I know that they're here, for, they're there and they're hearing me. And they really care. And sometimes they may have an answer. Sometimes they may not. But it's the fact that I know someone is there here for me. And they're hearing me. It just reassures my heart. And we see it right through our scriptures. Like in Isaiah 41 verse 10. Which says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 56 and verse 3. When I'm afraid I my trust in you. So right through scripture, we can see we are, we, are, we, are, we are different authors, our men and women of the Bible. They prayed when they are going through stuff in life and just need to be reassured. And of course, we also pray for things, things here on earth. Christ did pray for things here on earth. For example, pray for Lazarus, for Lazarus to be alive again. He prayed, he prayed um, um, when, um, um, for the loaves of bread and the fish, the fish. That was brought before him. He, he, he prayed, but whatever he did, it was not again for his own glory, um, but but um for the glory of the, of God in heaven. Um, but when he was glorified, God is glorified. So the, the main objective for us, the reason why we pray again, is really for God to be glorified, for God to be glorified. And and, and the church, the objective of the church as a whole, we are part of the church, is that. Whatever we do is to reflect the glory of God in the same way as which Christ, Christ did. And mankind, human beings, man, woman, boy, girl, we were the only creatures again on earth who really um, do not automatically give God glory. And the reason why we don't automatically give God glory in the sense that God is seen in us and through us, in our way that is inhibited. And that's because we have what is called free will. We can choose not to listen to God. We can choose not to obey God. And we choose not to obey God. Um, it's 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 it, what He wants to in us and through us is is is, is that is, is not is not seen. And so and so the church's job, one of, one part of the church's job responsibility, is to is to teach um, the, the members of the body to learn how to glorify God because our thinking has been shaped. By, by, by the worldly pattern, by we were born in sin, shape, iniquity, and our environment, you know, is, is, is so worldly many times in instances. And so our thought process, how we think, how we see things, is not based on the word of God. So we come in the church, we, we, we're supposed to be taught how to glorify God and, and how to glorify God, particularly in, in, in even praying as we pray. How do we pray in a way that glorify God? And I say it's about teaching. Um, I'm a teacher at heart, and I at, at heart, and and so oftentimes I, I tend to be more biased towards teaching within the body of Christ, you know. But the reality is that is a primary responsibility of the church, and that is to teach. If if you, if you and I'm gonna one reason I'm saying this is because I'm going to 
show you why this thing called pray, why we pray the way we pray and things doesn't happen. And, and prayer is not according to God's glory because we were not taught. And it's important that within the body of Christ, we are taught. Now, I, I'm not here telling you I know everything about prayer. I'm not telling my master of prayer. I'm not telling you I nail it down without no, no reserva reservation, no, no hesitation. I, I'm not saying I've mastered it, but I've come to the place where when once my mind has been renewed concerning they shall pray, it makes a big difference. And so it comes through through, through teaching, um, the fasting. Um, I said so over and over, pray and reading your Bible. Read the Bible. You're probably not reading the Bible, but by praying and fasting especially and and singing in church and dancing in church and and many of what we do in church they're not commanded by God but uh, but, but but they are done and they are good they are beneficial um there's some of the more spiritual discipline that help us grow and become become who we need to become so they are good in themselves but what teaching is commanded even from the Old Testament in like in Deuteronomy for example where where God told Israelites to teach their children, when they sit down, when they walk, when they lie down, when they rise up, he says, bind these teaching as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your good gates. So he was saying, teach them. Teach them because God knew that if people are taught, their minds are going to be changed. In the right way, that is. Taught in the right way, that is. Their minds will be changed in the right way so that God may be glorified. In fact, when Christ was leaving, he says, therefore, the last thing he was saying before he was leaving, he said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So here was Christ leaving. And the very last thing he was telling them you know, was to go and teach, make disciples. Disciples are a learner. And so as it relates to praying, I think it's important that our minds are renewed as it relates to prayer because we have been, we, we, we will see things growing up in the church, we hear things and, and we model what we see many times naturally and sometimes without thinking about it. But I would start to think about it, sometimes I realize that something is off. Something is off. If the Bible says this and, and I'm doing this, this is not happening. Something's off. And, and so, you know, when those questions comes up, we, they need answers. Answers are required. And so we have the Bible, which is supposed to be our guide, which is supposed to actually um, teach us okay. how to really Dave, pray. Dave, go and check on it. Dave, go and check. So teaching is more than just telling someone what to do. But teaching is but how to do the thing in a real way that bring about real change. So teaching should end in some form of application that makes your life better. I remember when I was at College of Agriculture and the very first time I'm hearing definition for, for, for learning um, was uh, that man from, from Guyana. Everyone probably remember him. He's from a Guyanese who was teaching sociology. And it says learning is a relatively permanent change in one behavior. So learn this more than just head knowledge, but knowledge is important. It's knowledge that we get that results in our behavior. So when I learn something, my attitude change. So when it comes to prayer, all those questions we have been asking, why do I pray and not see the answer? You know, is, is this prayer really real? You know, you know why? Why, why? why am I seeing all, all, all those things? And, and, and the Bible speaks about prayer and power in prayer. So... So, so what I want to talk about a little bit more is, is just, we started last week, we're going to talk about the big question is, how should I pray? I want to say, how should I pray? I'm not talking about whether you should kneel on your face, held down, or you shout, or you jump, or head covered, it got covered. I'm talking, how, we sh how should we pray in a way that impact changes first in our lives? And now we, so we in turn can impact those around us and the chicken lung effect, if that makes sense. Um, but it's not that way where we keep saying God knows and his answer is yes, or maybe later, maybe God will answer us later. Sometimes God hears us, he doesn't answer. That's not a prayer I'm talking. I'm, I'm, that, that's an answer we're looking for. We want to see the answer in our way. Because said, if we ask, it shall be given. We want to see the answer in a real practical way. We will not guess and spelling and sometimes trying to make 
excuse for God. Because sometimes things doesn't work and we try to make excuse for God. Because if the word says, if you ask, you will receive. We should receive. You understand? If you knock, you shall be open. That means you should be open or knock. Not, not God telling us, not we saying, God is saying, no, maybe, are we? And I'm not saying God is not saying that, but but, but, but too often in our lives, we pray for stuff. We pray for stuff. And, and we don't see come to pass. And, and, and we're asked to pray saying, if you knock, it shall be open. Why is it that when we knock, it's not opening? Why is it we seek, we ask, we're not receiving? James says, we have not because we ask not. But yes, we ask, we don't get sometimes. Christ says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that receive it, and it will be yours. When we read those, those verses, there is no clause within those verses. He said, if you ask, we know that God is true and God honor his word above his name. So, and, and look at Psalm 130. It says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So God values his word. So if he says something, it's going to come to pass. It's not like man that he should lie. In Romans 3, it says, God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So if God says something, if he says something, it is what he says. But again, oftentimes, as we see, it doesn't line up with our experience. You see what I'm saying? So we can say, all kind of, and I've been there before. We, sorry, we could have all these excuses, and you know we pray without seeing a thing. But and but my experience is telling me I, I, I'm not seeing it, and and so why am I not seeing these things? And go back again. If God's word is true, and God doesn't lie, why is that every when I pray every time for the things that I ask for, I'm not seeing those things. Therefore, the issues. Has, not, has nothing to do with God. This issue has to do with us because God be true and every man a liar. So, so therefore, and, it's, and I think this, the issue has many times to do with the way we interpret particular verses and many others, which oftentimes lead to deception, disappointment, confusion, and God not being glorified. Am I making sense so far? Making sense? Making sense so far? Thumbs up. Yes, no. Everybody sleeping on me? Yes. Right, making are. sense. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. So, so, so let's let's look at, for example, at, at, at a few a, a few scripture that I know I've used, <laughs> and in times gone by, and because because what we have done, we have interpreted scripture a certain way, and we and we don't read scripture in context sometimes, and so we walk away and, and we say the thing that's in the Bible. But because it's taken out of context, many times we we walk away and we, we're declaring and decreeing these things and, and it's not really, it's those words are in the Bible, but when taken out of context, it's it's not true. For example, I had a conversation recently with someone. I was the person, I would say first was I would say to the person that the scripture that I even I used to use it to this particular one which says, which says uh, um call those things which are not as though they were. And I don't know if you guys have heard a scripture before. I don't know if you have used a scripture sometime when things are happening and it looks bleak. I would call the scriptures. And, and I used to do it too, honestly, I used to. But then one day, just, I don't know if I, if I, if I was reading the Bible and came across it, or I was led there, or I just heard that verse and decided to look and see what it's saying. Because if you think about it, it doesn't make sense. If we, if we can call things which are not as though they were, why is not every time we, we pray for stuff, we don't see them come for, come for it? And, and this taking back to, to the Wesleyan quadrilateral that I use, that as we study the Bible, our experience are very important. But if our experience doesn't align up with the word of God and reality, something, something, something seems to be off, off. So it led me there. And as you read that scripture, it was saying, God, Paul was talking about, God who, 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 who formed the nation of Israel and what he did. And the scripture says, I think it's in Romans 4 and verse 7, or 14 and 7. It says, God, he said, God who called those things which are not as though they were. So it's not saying 
we call those things, say God. However, but if God places that thing inside of us and tell us to, to talk, it's going to come to pass. Another verse that we, I used to use, I go to the altar and pray for people in the early days and, and people go to the altar to pray. One verse we used to use is in Isaiah, which says, by his strife, we are healed. And so I'd go up and I, and I would pray and say, and, and, I mean, and I would, was fervent in my prayer, by his stripe, we are healed. And that was in the Bible. And of course, again, people come to praying and they were not being healed. And I was like, okay, God, I don't understand this. And I went back to the Bible to read that, 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 that verse. I pushed the scripture. When I read it, it was speaking about salvation. It was speaking about salvation. No, I'm not saying that Christ coming and Christ will live inside of us. Christ cannot heal us physically. But that part of the scripture, when you go back in the eyes and you read it, it has everything to do with salvation. And think about it. Anyone who come before God and they repent and they repent of their sin and believe in their heart and they made that, that, that confession of faith, they are saved. They are healed and delivered from their sin every time. So you see, so there are scriptures that we, 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 we quote. Even Matthew, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, they will be open for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks find and the one who knocks, the door will be open. But then if you read down further and sit in context, this is not for everyone. It's not for everything. It says, which of you, if, you, if your son asks for a bread, will give you a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, to give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So right here, we can see there's a relationship. It's, it's, it's not really in, in, it's not really out of context. We're asking that it's our, our Father, so we can go before him, and yes, we can ask him for stuff. But it's going to be, have to be, again, according to his will. And sometimes, again, we ask the wrong motive. So the conflict that we have is because what we're asking for is not to glorify God in most instances. Or sometimes we ask for things and it, it sometimes may detract us away from what God wants to do, do in our lives. And it becomes inward and becomes worldly. And as such, God may not respond to those prayer. Am I making sense so far? So again, so here we have the world telling us these things, and sometimes we pick things out of our context, and and we take apart and wrote this little part here, and the word is the word is really clear. It is saying the thing, but it's out of context. We read it in context, we realize that it's it's it's, it's not just as we're saying it. But I do believe that if we knock, it shall be open. I do believe that we ask, it shall be given. So this leads us to the top, the, to the real question of question this evening. How then should we pray? Again, how then should we pray in a way that our prayers are answered and answer all the time? How should we pray? I know that may be a bold statement, but I'm going to show you the Bible just, just, just because if, if God says that we ask, it shall be given. Ask for anything. Set it up, mountain be moved, it shall be moved. Unless it's a lie. It, you know, unless it's really a lie. And we know it's a lie because, again, God cannot lie. So it has to be with us. It has to be with our approach. All right, makes sense. So, so, so how then should we pray? And I, and I think that when we pray, we need to pray in a certain way, according to the will of God, that will bring Him glory, and not take us away from what He wants us to do. We can also pray for those things that Christ promised us, which is which is seen in which is seen in the Lord's prayer. And last week we looked at the Lord's Prayer a little bit. And so in approaching in God, in, 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 in praying for things that we know will come to pass, we have to first recognize who we are and who we are coming to. So as we pray, we're praying to our Father, again, who is in heaven. This is both personal and inter 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 um, in, um, sorry, um, relational and personal. You see, God has our attention every time because we are his children. And he is our father, and we have submitted to him as a father. And we're also as a servant. And the Bible says he doesn't hear the unrighteous in a sense that he can't hear them when they pray, but he doesn't, 
their prayers are guaranteed to be answered, but to hear them. But many times God responds to the unrighteous because he is merciful as part of his character. So the Bible says, let the rain fall the roof of the just and the unjust. So he will, he, he, he will come through for them, but it's not necessarily because they pray because he's a good God and, and, and he's, he's, he's extending his mercy to them and his love to them still in a different kind of way so that that love and that mercy may pull them to, 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 to him. But we, we are his children. We are his children. He is our father. Dear father is Abba, Abba father. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a term of endearment that a, a, a young child, not just an adult, a young child um, have with his father. And so as we pray, we're, we need to approach God in like manner as a child. As a child, look what Matthew 8 and verse 2 says. He called the child to him and placed a child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like, like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So he said, therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So as we approach God, we approach him as a child. A child is needy. A child, there's nothing that child can bring to the table. When Desiree and Samuel was four, five, six, that was the age group, they, they, they depend solely on us. They needed us. And without us, they, 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 they couldn't survive. They couldn't cook, couldn't bathe, them, bathe, bathe themselves. There's nothing they could have done. So they need us. So they come to us for whatever they need. And this is what Christ was saying. He was saying that, it's not say we should be able like a child, but that 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 humility, that 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 spirit where you, you come before him, poor in spirit, that's in the beatitudes. We have nothing to offer. You are you 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 are at, 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 the, at the disposal of of of, um, of of Christ and of Yahweh. You just as the, at, the, at the disposal. There's nothing you have, and without them, you're nothing. And when you come, you don't come demanding anything. You come with a heart. Yes, you want the stuff, but you're not coming away demanding and dictating to God what I get and what I don't get. Only a spoiled child does that. But think about children which are which, 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 which were brought up, I would teach them, and, and you know, and, they, and we don't give in everything, every, everything that they want and ask, they're gonna come to us the right attitude. And sometimes their thoughts are pure in coming to us and asking for certain things. But not because their thoughts are pure and necessarily mean that the things that they're asking for is wrong. It's, it's right, right thing. So like us, I'm not saying we shouldn't go to God. We shouldn't think twice about going to God when we're having issues. We shouldn't think twice about going to God. So if my, my finger is hurting me, it is there for me to go to, um, to, go, go, go to my boy. If I have a pair of shoes, I can go to a pair of shoes. There's nothing that should stop us from going to God. But what I believe we need to realize that when we go to him, there's no guarantee that he's going to give us certain things. Certain things is not guaranteed. But we go to him. But we go to him, you know, we were leaving up to, up to him. And sometimes as a child, parents said, no, the child may walk away disappointed. But guess what they did they do later on? They come right back around, trusting like nothing happened. So he's saying, come to me. Come to me. With that mindset, come to me, you know, needing me that you can't live without me. And so, as we approach God, it, it should not be it should be one where we're where we're, we're aiming to please Him first, not necessarily to please our own selves or to fulfill our own agenda, our desires that we we have. I want to say nothing is wrong in asking God, asking anything of God that our hearts desire. It's not wrong. But the guarantee will not, will not be there if he will not get not be glorified or he will not get the glory. And that's the reason why Christ says, pray that will be done here on earth as is in heaven. So we should therefore pray for things or seek pray for things that are in his will. So as we do that, it's a guarantee that the things that we pray for will come to pass if it's within his will. Um, I think Jennifer quoted scripture last time we're, we're talking, 1 John, 1 John 14. Um, uh, 
and he said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his what? His will, he, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, once we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. But if we go back and put the scripture in context again, we realize there's a lot of things we ask him for, we don't get it. But if we go back to, to up to verse 14, he says, ask according to his will. Look at John 14 again, verse 13 to 14. He says again, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. This is Christ talking. God himself talking. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And he repeated himself again. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So it has to be in his will. Look at John 15 verse 7. Again, he's making promises again. He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So here, here are all these scriptures that that that's are in the Bible and they're quoted, but he's saying the answer to the prayer, the guaranteed answer to the prayer is that it has to be according to God's will. No, we can go and we can ask for stuff. We can ask for stuff. And, and we should, we shouldn't have no reservation in going to God if it's nothing crazy. I mean, go to him, still ask him. Someone, someone and Desri ask for stuff. Like recently, Desri, oh, she asked for something recently. I, I, I haven't even answered about yet. <laughs> because she, I, I know she was testing the waters. And so she sent me a text and she ended up talking. And the text she sent, sent me, she was testing me. She wanted something, she was testing me. But she, because she knew, she knows the father I am. I'll do stuff for her. Someone's the same thing. I'll do stuff for them. But it's not everything they ask I'm going to do. But that still doesn't stop them from asking and testing the water. So if we're going to do the will of God, we have to understand what the will of God is. What does it mean when we talk about the will of God? Am I making sense? I've said a whole lot for the past 30 minutes. Making sense? I can't see people's faces. The teacher, I mean, just, I, I, just, I don't see about language. Are we, are we good so far? All right. All right, I guess I, I guess we are good. All right, so let's move on. So let's talk about the will of God. Because if we are going to pray on God's will or the will of God, we, we have to know what it is. What, is. what is the will of God? And so the will of God are those things that God desire in heaven to come to pass on earth, simply. And that is what is in the Lord's Prayer, or what we call Lord's Prayer, is that Whatever we're praying for, we want to make sure that the way God has it in heaven is the way it's done here on earth. It, God will work through us. Work, work, work on earth through us. We're his agents and work through us. In heaven, everything is perfect. There's nothing in heaven to, 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 to mess up or to, to confuse what's happening in heaven. It, however, here on earth, there's so many voices that, that are around us. So what God is saying, God is saying that, listen, be intentional when you pray. Pray that the things, the principles in heaven, the things that I have in heaven that you, 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 have, you don't see and you have not heard, eyes have not, what about say, eyes have not seen, he, neither ears have heard, neither, neither has it entered in the hearts of man, the thing God has in store for us. Those things, those things, pray for those things to come to pass. And so, so, and so, so that's God's will, will that, what, what's in heaven be on earth because that's how ultimate is going to be glorified. But what I found is that some of some of his wills are revealed in the written word. And we can call these wills his revealed will. And then there is a secret will. And the secret will is just those things, those plans he has for us that he, somehow he has not made clear step by step as to what we need to do. What I've realized and I would suggest, I would encourage is that we should never focus the Arabic overly concerned with the secret will of God. Because God is going to do what he's going to do and no upon earth can stop what God has ordained to come to pass. Isaiah 46 and verse 9 says, Remember the things of old, for I am God, 
and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. To clear the end from the beginning, and from the ancient time, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. Now the verse in Isaiah, which says that, as, as the rain comes down and water the land and bring forth fruit, it says, so will it be my word. They will not return void, but they will accomplish the things that they were sent to accomplish. I'm paraphrasing. So God, so, so what God has been for you and I, the plan he has for us, will come to pass. So our concern is to pray those things that are revealed in our way that make us become prepared for the secret will that he has for our lives. Those plans, the plans he has for us, the plans we quote many times from Jeremiah 29. We, we quote all the time, and he quoted, he, 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 he presents to us in a different way. He says, with the paths or the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by God. We said, all things work together for the good for those who love God, and those who are called according to his wonderful purpose. So, so those are the things. So, so that's the thing in place already for us. Our concern is what he has revealed to us in his word. You see, I've, I've realized, I'm, you realize there are two different timings the Bible speaks of. It's Kairos and Kronos. And as we wait for God's secret will to take place over the months and the years, that's Kronos. We focus on what God revealed to us. And as we focus on what God revealed to us, I believe what he has in heaven, which is a Kairos. Kairos moment and Kronos, Kronos is chronological Kairos is, is what he, 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 have, he has in place for us, which, which, which transcends time. time. Time doesn't have nothing much to do with, do with Kairos. God has this plan and many times the plan he has for us can only be revealed and can only be seen and can only be manifested in our lives when we line up our lives chronologi chronologically according to his revealed will. And what I've realized is that many times the real answer to what we pray for is in what he already wants us to do. For example, asking for wisdom. Sometimes we go and pray, God, who should I marry? God, is this my wife? God, send my wife. God, God, which job should I take? God, and we, we pray for all those things. And, and again, we can go to more of those things. But I believe there is some revealed will that he has for us. He says that if we lack wisdom, pray and ask and shall be given. He says to us, pray for strength. You're going through, pray for strength. If, if, if that is making sense. So our concern is to be caught up in praying for God's revealed will. Not us making up our own desire. Like so the Spirit tells me that. Or the Spirit tells me this. And the Spirit of God is telling me this, what God said to me. And, and no one should judge anyone and, and say God didn't tell you that. You must know what the Spirit of God is saying to you. You need to work out your salvation if you're in trembling. But be sure that what you say God is telling you is what God is what God actually is telling you. Because if it contradicts God's word, again, it says God is not an author of confusion. So let, let all men be a liar and God be true. So if someone, if I tell you I'm going to be the next president of the United States, God told me that. Come on, I mean, it can't work. You better make sure that's what's going to happen. Because, of, of course, I can't be, number one, pretty much. I can't be. But let's say, he, he probably that's the best example to use. But you know what I'm trying to say? I'm simply trying to say, if there's something that we're saying that God called us to do and be, and the word of God clearly contradicts it, we have to stand on God's word. And again, I go back to those scriptures we take and we quote and we hold on to those scriptures that sometimes are misapplied and misinterpreted and they cause more pain than anything. So then, how then do we guard, make sure we're praying, um, you know, God's will? We have to read the Bible. We got to read the Bible. We have to read the Bible. But it says, study to show thyself a proof, a workman rightly dividing the work of truth. Bible talk about the word of God is useful for living. Bible talk about the word of God is God breathed. The Bible reveals God's character from Genesis all the way through. So we we so we have to read the Bible and not just just read it. We have to study the Bible. Now we study the Bible. We're going to see God's revealed will for us. And oftentimes, 
as we see his revealed will for us, many times we start to say, okay, sometimes we start have a hint as to probably what God has in store for us. He will never give us the full picture. Someone once told me that, that if God, if God show you the end, if God show you light at the end of the tunnel, he, he, he's saying that, that, that that's not true. It's not God, it's his devil. That's what the person was saying to me. And it makes some sense. And that's maybe debatable, but it makes some sense because God wants to trust him. He, he, he wants to trust. It's a, it's, a, it's a day by day trust. We take up one foot and put the next one from the other, but we know God is working something on for us. You know, there the, are the times, it, it, like you tell Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Never tell him how, never tell him exactly going to work out. But as Abraham stepped, as Abraham spent time with God, God started to reveal to Abraham little by little. So as we read the word of God and the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, it's not going to happen. We're going to see God. He's going to share stuff with us in our spirit. And, 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 and some things we may not fully understand, but our spirit is going to become alive and, and the word that's revealed to us is going to be used to void those things that the spirit of God is saying to us. You know, so, so, so the first thing we have to stay in the Bible, we have to study the Bible. We have to break it down, read it in context, meditate upon the word of God. Spend time, not just read one verse or two verse, or just read to fulfill or satisfy um this 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 this, this legalistic um, um um desire or void that is we feel, but read it in our way because we want to glorify God, we want to hear from God, and we want to pray accordingly so God can work through our lives the way He worked through Christ's life. The next thing is that we need to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The Bible encourages to pray in the Spirit. And to pray in the Spirit doesn't mean speaking in tongues. To pray in the Spirit means you're going to pray in accordance with the Spirit. He's our paraclete. He's with us. So as we pray, the Spirit of God is going to be there to guide us and to lead us. And sometimes, when we don't even open our mouths, when we don't even know what to say, the Bible said, the Holy Spirit intercede. And our behalf with moan and groan and utterances that we don't know. We just, it, 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 the Spirit of God knows what we're going through. And it goes back to God and tells God we're going through. And, and this answered a question for me. Sometimes I don't pray for certain stuff. But God know I need it. And the Spirit know I need it. And the Spirit intercedes exactly on my behalf where those things are concerned. So we pray this, we pray in step with the Spirit. We pray according to what the Word of God says and what the Holy Spirit inside of me is saying. So we pray in the Holy Spirit. So as we read the Bible and we pray in the Spirit, we pray for things that give God's glory, give God glory. For example, look at Christ in the garden. He prayed three times for the will of the Father to be done. Three times. Because his job his goal was to give God the glory in all, in all instances. Look in Matthew 5 and verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So as we pray, it's about giving God glory. Look at Isaiah 43 and verse 7. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made. First Corinthians 10 and verse 31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. John 15 and verse 8, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. So again, as we pray in the Spirit of the Bible, we, what we can do, we can have prayers that makes us like Christ. So for his glory, they're going to be answered. But we pray prayer that, that aim for us to make us like Christ. It's going to happen because God's, that's God's desire, desire for us to become like his son, Jesus Christ. So if I go before him and I'm praying, God, I need to be like your son, Jesus Christ, so that you may be glorified, it's going to be done. First Peter 1, verse 21. For to this you, for, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you may follow in his steps. First John 2 and 6. Whoever says he abides in me ought to walk in the same way in which he, he walked, as Christ walked. First Peter 2 and verse 21. For this you have been called. Um, same scripture I'm reading. Ephesians 5. Therefore be imitators of Christ as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Think about it. If we start praying more, and again, let me back up and say, I'm not saying we should ask for stuff that we need day to day and it's we're going through. But 
I think many issues that we go through in life, if we pray and ask God daily, God, help me be like Christ. This is your desire. God, help me. I tell you, many things that we have problems with, we don't have problems with. Many things that we desire, they'll come to pass. Because like Christ, Christ only did. He says, I only do what I see the Father doing. And when we, when we come like Christ, we can say like Christ, God hears me every time I pray. And so when we pray, it's not a surprise, God. We're praying to reassure our hearts and for God to be glorified, if that makes sense. When we pray in the Spirit and read the Bible also, we can go back now and we can pray about those promises. God made us many promises. And God is the slacker who make a promise and then go back on his promises. So if we go and, 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 and pray back his promises, these are prayers which are guaranteed to be answered because these are according to his will, his revealed will. Look at Psalms. I'm going to read a few. Psalms 119 verse and 4 and 50. David said, remember you, your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life. Go back to the promises of God. God promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never abandon us in our time of need. When we are going through, and we seem hopeless, we destitute. There's no light shining through. It seems like night is forever. Go back and thank him for his faithfulness because he promised us will never leave us or forsake us. When we are in need, I would always have. Remind him, God, you're, you're Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. And you say, I must cast my cares upon you because you care. Put them on him. Work his promises to him. If, if we sin and we feel out of walk, go back to him. Don't walk in condemn, condemnation. Because he says, if we sin and we come and we ask for forgiveness, he will cleanse of us of all unrighteousness. Go back to him and pray those prayers to him. Thank him for the peace. He says, if, 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 if we keep our eyes on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. So we go to him and say, God, I'm struggling, God. I don't have that peace. And his word says, if we turn our eyes on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. We need wisdom. He says in James, if you ask for wisdom, you will get it. And honestly, that's what, number, that's what the main thing I believe we need to be asking God for. Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. And he said, if you ask and you don't doubt, you're going to get it. You're going through people up against you. We don't need to worry. He says that any weapon that forms against us shall never prosper. And every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned. It's a promise. We don't have to fight those battles. If we feel tired and feel like giving up, I don't know what to do. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wing as eagle. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and never faint. Read back those promises to him. They're true. They're true. Read them back to him. He honors his word above his very name. So as we go through, we want to, to pray prayers for his glory, prayers that he may be revealed in us and through us. We want to pray that we'll be like Christ, that's that, that's one of the biggest things. Us be like Christ. That's why we're saved. He wants to be like Christ and little Christ over the earth, joint tears as we go forth in this earth and, and the light and the salt of the world impacting people. So, so as, as, as we pray about that, we're going to be that. The power is going to come through us. But, 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 but you know what? I, and I'm talking for me. And, and, and I, honestly, we get caught up so much in, in, in the things of this world more than we realize. Having that house having that retirement money, having that job, having this wife, having these kids, having this, having that, having this. And all those things are really important. I want to, I would love when I'm retired, able to, to rest and have some money and be able to travel and do for my grandkids and help and, and stuff like that. I, I would love those things. I would love to have, a, you know, you know, health and strength. I would love to, to, to have certain things at my disposal, my comfort, I mean, earth. But I think, those things should come secondary to what God requires of us to serve him. For, so he may be glorified. 
And so Sumter put all these things in front of him. And he's saying, I've given you great and glorious promises. Lots of those promises. And everything I shall come to pass. He says in Matthew, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And everything that shall be added, the things that we need will be added. So our response is getting God's word. See what God requires of us. Pray about those things. As you pray about those things, those answers will come. Because it says, if you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, it shall be open. He says, ask, ask. In, in, in John, he says, this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask, if we abide in him, he's going to give us. We're going to bear much fruit. So those words are true. But we need to seek after him, after righteousness. We seek other things that's going to bring him glory. And sometimes, however, when we ask, we may not immediately answer. Sometimes we don't immediately, you know. Sometimes we don't. And sometimes, because we ask our miss. You know, sometimes we ask our miss and we don't get the answer. What do we do then? We simply take up a foot and take the very next best step of faith. Let the Spirit of God lead you. So if you're sick and you're praying for the healing and you're not going to heal it, guess what you do? You go to the doctor. Get up and you find a doctor and where you're going, you're praying. God can heal you on the way. It could be that God wanted to minister, minister someone in the hospital. Go to the doctor. Don't make a child stay at home and die. Because God never promised us that we're not going to die. God didn't promise us that we're not going to get, get sick. Never did. But what he promised us is going to be there with us. And he promised us that when we glorify him, he's going to be there with us. Carry the child to the doctor. If you're broke, you can't pay a bill. And you pray to God. And it's about time for your life to be cut off. And us to we do keep praying. Because we do call a brother, call a sister. And borrow some money or ask for some money. But as you're going, who knows? Who knows? Step, let's go. Your child is wayward. Don't just declare and decree that a child is the head and not the tail. Discipline the child. While you pray, you discipline that child. The best you know how, ask for wisdom and discipline that child. It's going to work because the Bible says, Train up a child in the way the child should grow. And when the child gets older, the child will not depart. That's revealed as his will. But this child may be, may be really out there wayward. And we don't know what to do. Do what you can do and keep praying. Your marriage is not working. Find a counselor. It's not working. Find a counselor. Find someone who has been there and done that. And keep praying. So I'm just saying that God will answer those those prayers that those promises and that are laid out, he, 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 he will respond to us when we seek give him glory. He will respond to us when we want to to be like Christ. He will respond to us. At Saint Catherine High School, the greatest high school in Jamaica, right, Speedy? There's our school motto is prayer and work conquer all, and I believe in that. So as we pray God's promises. As we pray, God's, God's reveal will that are made clear to us. And as we wait to see how he's going to work things out, his, his secret, secretive will, for lack of a better term, we just work, do what we need to do. The Bible says, faith work is dead. Show me your work. And your faith will be, will be seen. So as I said today, we, there are many things we need. And we know serve a father who knows what we need before we ask. And he wants to come to him and ask. But I say, let us go before him and have a desire to ask according to his will to glorify him. And I do believe in my life, I can tell you, and your life, I can tell you, he will be glorified because his word is true. And God honors his word above his very name. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for this truth. It brings life. And so, Father, as the word has gone forth, we pray that it will indeed bring life to your glory and to your honor. Thank you for what has been. Thank you, God, for just, just speaking even now, Father, to the hearts of the people who are listening. I pray, God, that the word that was sent to I pray they may, you know, find fertile soil and bear much fruit to your glory, God, and to your honor. We ask for all these things in a wonderful name we pray. Amen.